All right, what's up, guys? Uh, just going to make this video really quick uh, to go over the new updates here on version 1.8. This will be kind of the last set of Zoom videos before the official training. So I just wanted to get this out to give you guys a bit of a heads up here temporarily. So I'm going to go over just the gray items here. There's not too many updates from the 1.7. We're working on some stuff with the campaign builder. It's going to take a little bit, so that's been our main focus. But anyway, I've got a few updates here. First one is just a uh, formatting thing, so I'm not really going to cover that. Just know that that's done. All right, so the edit mode, if we go into any of the sheets here and go up to optimize, you can see you'll see a edit mode now right here. So you just click this. And if you want to reassign the campaign names or portfolio IDs, you can do that now in line. Just uh, the, the, the IDs for the portfolios you get from these portfolio tabs. That's the numerical ID. And in order to add more to this list, you have to do that in Campaign Manager and then download a new bulk file. And then it'll be in there. And then you just grab the ID and then you go over and just change that numerical field there and then in your painting you actually just change the text and then it'll update you can actually do it with the ad group as well I'll probably add that but usually it's the campaign name that you that need to change all right and let's go there okay so for this this is the auditing feature on the tactics dashboard so just go here I don't have any data in this sample copy, but you can see up here all this data is populated based on what's currently what's currently active. So essentially, you just hit this audit button, and then it'll populate this information up here. You do have to be in the synced state of all files, which I, I always call that the state that you're in after you hit this button there. All right, and then you just scroll over, and you can see it's got the sponsored display. And then the combined all ad type sections now as well. So pretty straightforward, I think. You can change the ASIN here. Any of these in the upper left. I've got a pretty good change the information. Right. Check the ASIN image. Okay, so for this one, we added three ASIN images on the video right table as opposed to one. So you can just see the three images over here, and it's basically the first one here that says ASIN is going to be all your single ASIN campaigns, or if you have multi-ASIN, uh, you'll see multiple pictures here. It'll only go up to three, though, so you could have more than three potentially in the campaign. Um, but the sponsor brands, if you have headline search ads, it's going to be those three of the ones you're running the ad on. And then, um, Videos usually the first couple of images. So the one image. The other thing we're going to add is there's a column here, empty one. So this one's going to end up probably being the sponsored brand headline uh, title or whatever. So you can actually all be able to change that in line from the video right here. So that'll be good. So that's that. And then. The SKU has been added now as a default under the settings here. So if it's over, you see here, I can set this now, whatever SKU I want. And then when you create a campaign, so exact, campaigns. And now you'll just have that SKU populated and you can change it. So you can change it at that point if you want, but that's kind of a default in case you want to create campaigns for one SKU. Uh, in bulk, that just kind of saves you a step there if you want to set that. All right. And if you make it blank on the settings tab, it'll just show up as blank there. And then you just pick independently which one you want. All right, so this is one thing we were testing from last time. The ASIN expanded. There's a button, only applies for the sponsored products. But here, this button here, 
we thought that if you replace the ASIN dash expanded nomenclature, which is stored ASIN, it would still let you upload it. We had tested it before and thought it would, but it actually didn't. So we added this back in that just removes the rows altogether. So you just have to know if you're using that new campaign type, you have to actually remove the rows manually. So this, this button, well, you have to remove the rows instead of replacing the nomenclature. This button does that automatically. All right, and then the quick insights, this is uh, something I'm working on right now. So go over to the labs tab and you can see we've added a couple of sections. This first section is quick insights. So you're basically just gonna come up here, go to labs, go to quick insights. You do have to import your, uh, or I'm sorry, not for this one. You gotta hit initialize first and that just sets up something in your sponsored products file. It just takes two seconds. And then you pick the metric that you want to run it on. So I want to see the spend. I'd click on spend. And actually, I need to initialize this. Nope. There it is. Okay. So you can see what it does there. It's just going to give us by ASIN and then by hashtag as far as the metrics. And you can do that for any of those metrics you saw. These ones that have multi ASIN or multi ASIN campaigns, and you can see the ones with the images are the same. And so it's self explanatory, I think. This one here, the daily insights, if you're familiar with Apex, uh, still working on this one, so it's not done yet, but it's going to have the same columns that the one in Apex does, where essentially import your 30 day daily sponsored products ads file, and then you just come up and you have to initialize it first and then run, pick whichever metric you want here. We're probably looking at orders. And then it'll be color coded as well, so it's pretty helpful from just like an auditing standpoint. And then you have uh, the bit over and table information over here, so you got your image if it's a single ASIN campaign, and then you've got the kind of the upper target off the bit over and table. So depending on which target shows first from the top down, it's the one that will display here. So this is most useful, I think, if you have a lot of single single keyword campaigns and it's got a lot of the placement data out here in your campaign budgets and it's kind of a different way to view maybe the target sniper tool and maybe more of a condensed uh, macro format uh, but what you can tell usually from a campaign level is if you've got campaigns that are trailing off or if they started to do really well like this top one here that was getting one order one order and it's getting twenty six ten. 10. you can see that there's a trend there so you try to Look into those, and, and if things are falling off, you try to figure out why. So that's kind of the intent of that. All right, and then we've got a big update that is not quite done for this top one here that will allow us to uh, when we save our rank files on the settings tab here. So there's going to be you can see here a helium ten rank with badge. So instead of keyword underscore ace and you name it the keyword underscore date, so it'll be like that. Uh, should we say e. So it'll be like that. And then you, it's a special way to save it off Helium 10. So I'll have to have a video that shows you how to do that. You basically have a Chrome extension and you right click on the actual user interface instead of like exporting the file from Helium 10. And then it has the badge information in there as far as if you have like Amazon's choice for a keyword. Um, and then when you import that data, it's going to come into this sheet here. You can see we've got a badge column, but it's not going to be in there. This, these words should actually be over here in the word badge and it'll show up here. Um, and then with that information, we'll be able to pull that info over to the override table. So you'll have, you know, which one you currently have the uh, Amazon's choice badges for or other badges as well. So that'll be cool. The, I think there was a few updates up here on the formulas. So you can actually download the logic formulas now from this, these links here. I don't remember if the CPC mode was enabled in 1.7. I'll have to check. But CPC mode, this is actually a pretty good improvement. So this applies only to the Apex formula. If you download the Apex formula here, you, you can see this kind of CPC mode fits in. But it really fits in for this up bid buy which comes into play for any target that is operating at 
a positive A cost, meaning it has a conversion um, up to your mid A cost. So whatever value you set here. So if I have like a 15% A cost, let's say it's going to up bid by 10% off of uh, currently the CPC. Since I have CPC mode enabled, but if I uncheck that, it's going to up it by uh, whatever the current bid was as opposed to the CPC. So here's your original bid. Here's the CPC. So you can see the CPC mode is actually more conservative and it'll have a lower uh, bid preview than if I did that. And I think this is able to make sure I'm looking for one. Only, okay, so this one. So theoretically, this 1.11 should go up on this button. And it did the 1.28. So that makes sense. Um, and that's that's a way you can be more aggressive and keep this value kind of, you know, the same. So hopefully that makes sense. These others are pretty self-explanatory. This one will, this one's actually fast. We just haven't done it yet. The um, sponsor brands and display bulk campaign builder. This is the hardest one. Actually, all of these are related to the bulk campaign builder. So we've got some improvements coming there, but um, that whole tool is quite a bit of work, so that may be a little bit before we get all of these uh, knocked out. And then here's some with just some questions. So if you submitted these, uh, maybe reach out to me via email. I put some more information here on the right. I had some questions. Actually, I've already added this. But other than that, I don't have... Anything. So let me just see if there's anybody else on here. Doesn't look like it. So I'm going to end it there and I'll uh, pick back up on the calls this afternoon and talk to you guys later.